In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to use inertia in a simple Windows 7 game. Now, I've already created the game and added manipulation. So you can see how I can manipulate the position of the puck here on the shuffleboard surface. So if I switch back to the code, actually to the XAML that represents this game, you'll notice that I've already added manipulation event handlers to my canvas. So I've got manipulation starting, which occurs uh, when the user touches the screen to begin the manipulation. I've got manipulation delta, which fires continuously as the manipulation is performed. And then finally, manipulation completed. Manipulation completed uh, is fired, of course, when the manipulation is done. Now, uh, sometimes that occurs when the user releases his or her finger or fingers from the screen, but not in all cases, as we're going to see in just a moment. To enable inertia for this manipulation, I simply need to add a additional event handler. So we're going to add an event handler for manipulation inertia starting, and it allows us a point to set our initial parameters for the inertia. Now, of course, inertia is the ability for an object to continue its manipulation even after the user releases his or her fingers from the screen. So we've all seen this, especially in those photo viewer examples where users can fling pictures about the screen, right? Uh, when you release your finger, the picture continues with whatever momentum it had when you released it. Let's navigate to the event handler. And I'm going to set a property of type translation behavior. Now we, we want to add inertia here, so I'm going to create a new instance of inertia translation behavior, and this is going to be added to the manipulation. And the first property I'm going to set is its initial velocity. Now we want the initial velocity to be equal to whatever the velocity was when the direct manipulation was completed. So in other words, when the user releases his or her finger, uh, whatever velocity there is in terms of scaling, rotation, or, or translation at that point, whatever speed it's currently going, we want that to be the initial speed uh, from which the inertia takes over. So that's why we're setting the initial velocity to the linear velocity that is coming from the event args that we're receiving. Now I can also define the desired deceleration or desired displacement of the inertia. Now if I did desired displacement, what I'd be doing is I'd be setting how far I wanted the object to move. And in this case, I'm not really interested in that because um, that's going to be up to whatever the speed is. I don't want to preset where it's going to go or how far the puck is going to travel. So in this case, I'm setting desired deceleration. Now you can set desired displacement, you can set desired deceleration, but you can't set both. Obviously only one is going to apply. Now the formula that I'm using uh, is, is basically, it's measured in device independent units per squared millisecond. So you can see the 1000 times 1000, that's the per squared millisecond part. And then the three times 96, that's three inches times 96 pixels per inch, which is the standard in WPF. So what I'm saying here is that I want to decrease the velocity of our puck by three inches per second, every second. So that's where those numbers come in. Now I'm going to move over to the manipulation delta event handler. Now, for the most part, this is implemented uh, already because of the manipulation. But remember, this is the event that gets fired continuously as a manipulation occurs. And what's interesting about it is it actually is going to continue to fire even after the user releases his or her finger because of inertia. So I can actually check a property is inertial on the event args and then take some action. In this case, the action that I'm going to take is simply to, to do some bounce checking to prevent the object, in this case the puck, from flying off the screen. And I'm going to do that simply by retrieving a containing rectangle from the manipulation container. Right, the manipulation container is the canvas, and so in this case we're checking the render size and we're setting it to this containing rectangle. And I could just go to the canvas directly, uh, but I want to make my code a little bit more reusable, so in this case we actually use manipulation container. Alright, so we get the containing rectangle, 
we also get a rectangle that represents the bounds of the element, or in this case the puck itself, and then it's just a matter of checking to see, does the containing rectangle contain the shape itself? And if not, then we want to call the report boundary feedback method, and that'll prevent the inertia from continuing to apply. So essentially it's going to stop our puck before it leaves the screen. That's actually all the code that I'm going to do, but I do want to point out the fact that we have this manipulation completed event handler, and this is fired after the manipulation is done, and that includes the inertia. So in this case, once the inertia has completed and the manipulation is done, we're going to do a hit test to determine where the puck ended up, and then we're going to perform our, our scoring functionality. We're going to see where the puck ended up, if it ended up in a scoring area, what the point value for that scoring area was. We're even going to highlight the scoring area that the puck landed in. So this is all uh, not related to inertia, but the interesting thing is that it happens after the inertia is complete. So let's try it out. We'll go ahead and start up our game. And you can see that we can manipulate the puck, of course, but we can also fling it and it will gradually coast to a stop, end up in a scoring area, and of course we get that little action. We can even fling it all the way up, but it stops because of the bounds checking that we're doing. And that's inertia in Windows 7 and WPF4.